Howdy everybody, Emmett Ferguson here with 10 ideas for abstract canvas painting. So I get in these like, these grooves in my life where I decide that I want to do this activity, this like daily practice of doing 10 ideas per day. Now, I'm not totally consistent with it. I'll get into like these binges where I'll do like 30 days in a row, 60 days in a row. But anyway, this is one of those times, so I thought I'd share these 10 ideas for abstract canvas painting. And if you're looking for ideas, if you feel stuck, if you just need to brainstorm with somebody, but you don't have people to brainstorm with, or you're just scrolling and you just wanted to see what these ideas were, I'm here for you. This is what these are about, so let's dive right in. Number one, any trend. So this is like anything that you see on on social media that seems more like a trendy painting thing so drip painting i mean i know these painting styles have been around for could have been around for a long time but you know it's it's also you could also consider it somewhat trendy right like you know these like videos that go viral because um you know it's just an idea that people haven't seen people haven't witnessed these things but so it becomes a trend, but you know, drip painting, you know, where they hang like a, like a bucket from the ceiling and they let it like spin around like drip painting, something like that. Splatter is another trend. Splatter has been around a long time, but you know, this is really, um, doing different techniques for your abstract painting, tape painting. Um, you know, people that use tape to create just straight lines and you can experiment with all sorts of things like that. So you know, these are these are trends, but they're also things that have been been around for a while. So you could experiment, or you know, just do a full on painting without experimenting with that. Um, feet painting—that's F E A T painting, not feet as in feet painting with your feet, but feet painting, F E A T, um, painting in any way that you feel would be interesting for a viewer. So this is more of like the content creator as an artist type of thing, rather than. Um, or like a performance artist maybe, but like painting with only your your non-dominant hand. So for me, that's my left hand. Or you could paint with your feet. I don't know. Uh, do feet painting with your feet. And there's another one. Uh, what did I put? Single, cro single color? Oh, so like do a single color painting. Now, that's not necessarily like a feat because people have been using single color and using values for... Um, for, from with a single shade of of color, multiple shades of a single color for for centuries, but just an idea like feet, like a, a, achieving some sort of feet, painting upside down. I see this one dude on Instagram who gets tons of views, but he paints while riding a bicycle and has like a music DJ box that he does at the same time. It's pretty ridiculous. I'm not saying you need to go that far, but just some ideas. You're gonna come up with some abstract work. Three, a master study of something abstract. Simple enough. I mean, there's an idea. Just take someone, take a master or someone who's considered a great artist and, and study their work and just copy it, duplicate it. Yeah, this is an exercise or a practice that's been done throughout the ages. So interesting, interesting thing there. So I was watching Vincent or I was listening to a Vincent Van or I was going through Vincent Van Gogh's drawings. So, so I have this series where I paint his drawings. And, you know, during as I go through his drawings, I like to think about what was he thinking during this time period? What was, you know, going on through his life? So I listen to his biography in comparison with it as well. And you know, I reached a point in his life as I went through his drawings in his life where I thought to myself, what is he doing during this phase? And what I realized was he was just painting tons or drawing. He was drawing and painting tons and tons of portraits and still lifes. So that's an interesting idea that you can do is rather than just doing a master study, what you can do is go through an artist's career, chronological, and like, you know, really dive in to think about what they were trying to accomplish at the time. So rather than copying them, copy like the mindset that they were in. So if they were painting still lives or they were painting cubists or they were painting in an abstraction way, or if they were painting super like rugged and, you know, Jackson Pollock stepping all over their canvas or whatever, maybe get into that mindset and try to come up with some ideas on your own that, you know, take that mindset. 
so for me, you know, I saw Vincent was instead of like continuing to copy his uh, paint his drawings because he was actually painting a lot of them already. I don't want to just like, you know, do different versions of his paintings. Um, you know, I decided to just do lots of more still lifes and portraits. So you can take that idea. I hope that's helpful. It's an extended story there. But four, still life into abstract. So take a still life and, and instead of trying to paint it realist, paint it figuratively, do it abstractly. A uh, self portrait, abstract self portraits. Those are fun. Uh, those are really fun when you get to really makes you push yourself out of your comfort zone, out of the box, because it really gets you to see yourself differently. But at the same time, here's why I don't think it's it's um, as scary as, and I don't mean scary as in like, you know, terrifying. I just mean scary as in like, you know, sometimes we have to overcome our own personal doubts and fears and inclinations and habits to do something differently. And if abstract is different to you, then a painting yourself could be very concerning because we all know what we look like. And if it doesn't look like that, then we can start to question ourselves. But, um, you know, here's why it's fun is because there's only, are, we are probably the only person that will sit for our paintings day in and day out. And we can have so many still lifes of ourselves. And if they all look the same, it's pretty boring. So we can really take ourselves as a subject matter and really evolve it every single time. Even though we usually look different, our, we can also show how we can start to think differently over time as well. So that's why still life, our self portraits are awesome, I think, for, for, for pushing your boundaries, especially even abstractly. Um, six, intuition painting. So intuition, you know, like going in, this, this is how I would interpret intuition. Um, I might even say improvisational painting is going into a painting with zero expectation. That's almost impossible for some people. It's even impossible for, for myself, who I like to say that I do that sometimes. But going in with almost no expectation of what you want and just letting the paint evolve into something. Now... I know for for a lot of people that's very very difficult because you're like because you know it's almost impossible to go into something with a totally blank mind. We all want to say, oh well, you know, I had this idea in mind, or I wanted to work with these colors, but you know, using your intuition on just starting to go in with scratch and then start developing your ideas like right there and just starting to paint or lay down and paint before you even have an idea. And go from there. That's fun. I find that very fun for into. That's how I came up with this, and I actually like this piece. Uh, I like all my pieces, but some I like more than others. I do have favorites, <clears throat> which is why I ended up spending, um, you know, purchasing a T-shirt with this. So number seven, do your best realism. So here's a funny thing. If you're watching this, you might either be a very good figurative painter, realist painter, and you're looking for ideas for abstract, or you're an abstract painter, and you know you just want more abstract ideas. But it's funny because I'll do plein air painting sometimes, and people will like walk by and they'll like comment, and this isn't like the best compliment to get, or it's not even a compliment; it's just a comment. This is definitely not a good comment to get. Uh, but sometimes they'll be like, oh, so uh, it looks like you're an abstract painter. So basically what they're saying is that my, re my, you know, my painting of a, of a plain air, of something that I'm trying to paint from what I'm seeing looks abstract ra rather than figurative or realist. And I'm actually, you know, sometimes I'm actually trying. I, I don't try too hard to get perfect realism, but sometimes I am trying. And you know what? If it ends up turning out to look abstract, uh, that's great. But again, this depends on your skill level, right? Like if you're really, really good at realism, then you don't need to try too hard to do realism. But if you're really, 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 really good at abstract, then the more you try your best to do realism, it might just turn out more abstract and you might come out with something beautiful. So that said, uh, number eight, use new tools. So number eight, use new tools. Pretty straightforward there. If you use a brush, use your fingers. If you use your fingers, 
Um, you know, th these are these are principles more than specific like topics to paint of. So use new tools. If you use your hands already, um, you know, use a use a a, knife, a a palette knife. If you use a palette knife, use a shovel. If you use a shovel, use the back of a painting brush. If you, I'm looking around my apartment to find ideas for things. If you use a um, if you've used all these things, try food items. Food items could come up with some amazing things. I know this one artist on Instagram. She's like, she's like a leading in-house artist for Google or something like that. And all she does is she paints like actual objects. So she doesn't even. So she'll take like a banana or an apple and she'll just paint like the colors over an apple or banana. So that's pretty neat. And she's very well-known, successful artist, and she's funded by Google. And, and supported by Google. What what more do you need in a modern, technologically driven, Google driven society? I don't know. Um, so let's see. Number nine: interpret what you see as much as possible. So this is a lot of a lot of artists will say, oh, a lot of advice that I've gotten from artists when I was really just starting. And I think a lot of artists will hear, have heard at some point in their life, is to just to just to paint what you see, just to draw what you see. And while I think that's helpful, what I think can really help people to expand on their art is to interpret what you see as much as possible. So I think artists gain this great ability, and you know, if you're an artist, you can relate. But if you're not, maybe, you know, you're just looking for ideas. When you really start to look at something as an artist, you can really start to see the variety of colors that are possible. So uh, uh, the concrete, the, the floor that you're driving on, the road isn't just like a tar off gray color. When the sun's shining on it, there's whites. When it's... Uh, super dark at night there's blues and, and blacks and when there's you know the sun rising there's hints of like pink above it so you really in, in the clouds clouds is such a vibrant number of colors at, from any point of day it can range from white to blue to gray to red to purple and you know all the above so when you start to interpret what you see if you really give an opportunity to um, interpret what you're seeing at the finest possible details, you can start to come up with all these sorts of ideas and start to like mold them together and merge them together. So that's what I mean by interpret what you see. Not just, you know, drawing these like, you know, large, large um, depictions of, of what you see, but, you know, taking a moment to interpret, let it sink in and, you know, sharing how you interpret it for an audience. As much as possible and number 10 evolve someone else's ideas so I was reading this I was uh, looking at this great art book and it was called um, great French paintings or something like that and I was going through it and I thought it was so interesting how multiple artists can do portraits that were originally created by the same artist. And I don't even think that these are master copies. They're like interpretations. And I don't know how else to explain this uh, unless you've actually seen it. I'm sure like if you're, you've studied as an artist, you probably have. But they're not just like master copies. They're taking a port, like let's just say portrait of, of uh, Duke Johnson right so portrait of duke johnson painted by and by the way i'm totally making this up again so painted by claude monet and then 10 years later um there's a portrait of duke johnson made by and i'm gonna make up an artist's name Raphael rekazinski or something you know i'm making up these artists name and then like three years later there's another Portrait of Duke Johnson by um, Jeffrey Tinsel, by the, another name I made up. But, you know, what you'll find in these portraits is that uh, these these portraits will have, like, like similar features. It's for the same guy, but obviously the same Duke, but obviously they weren't all there to paint that same Duke. 
they all interpreted the original painting by Claude Monet. So um, just some thoughts there. These are 10 ideas. So re recap real quick. One, any trend. Two, feet painting. Three, master study. Four, still life. Five, self-portraits. Six, intuition. Seven, do your best realism. Eight, new tools. Nine, interpret what you see. And 10, evolve someone else's idea. So taking, you know, maybe it's a Rothko, maybe it's a Pollock, maybe it's a uh, Koshka, maybe it's a Sheila, maybe it's a Van Gogh, maybe it's something else. Take those art, art artworks and evolve that. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope that these 10 ideas for abstract canvas painting are helpful for you. And... Rather than doing topics, um, you know, specific subjects, these are more of I principle ideas, like principles that you can do to create work that's unique to you. So with that, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's helpful and stay tuned for another day of ideas.